Hey guys, Morten Henning from Flip Normals here. And in this video, we are looking at part one of sculpting an Overwatch inspired female face. This very exciting series where we take you from sphere to finished head, all in two videos. This is a really fun one, so we hope you learn a lot. So here is the finished render from the sculpt that we'll be creating in this two part series. And if you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe so you get notified every time we put out a new video. So just starting out, like as with anything, we always try to keep it simple from the beginning. So we're starting out with a fairly low risk sphere. Ignore the placeholder body that it's placed on. That was a previous attempt at a body. So it's sort of just to place it on something so that I had a, had a reference for kind of some some proportions. It's always nice to have something to build it on, just so you don't start in, in blank space, I feel like. Yeah, it's very hard to, to make a head without the, at least without the neck, and, and the neck connects to the body as well. So it's always nice to have something like that just to get started. Yeah. Throughout this video though, like most of it will obviously just be on the face. You won't really see the connecting body, but it's just nice, I think, as a starting point. So when you're just starting out like this, or when I'm starting out like this, what I like to do is just not re mesh at all and just get in some very, very basic shapes. And we sort of try to locate the, the major landmarks of the face. It's the eye sockets, the nose, just a little bit of the volume of the mouth and, and also the ears, just so we have some reference to place all the other elements of the face. Keep it very simple at this point. Real, don't go into more detail on this. And in terms of tools, because I know people will ask, it's very simple, very standard. I mean, there's a lot of clay buildup. Uh, I use the move brush, sometimes the Damien standard. I think that's pretty much it for tools. It's what we tend to use for most sculpts that we actually do. Uh, nothing surprising there, really. It's what we talked about a lot in the past. It's, it's not really about any specific brush that you use. You get comfortable with a few brushes and you tend to use those for 90, 99% of all your work. Yeah, there's nothing magical in a brush right now. You could have used Blender or Mudbox, 3D Coat, whatever you want really. <laughs> and in terms of references for this, we're looking at, there's a really cool Cirrus Suit Samus figurine that we're sort of taking inspiration from, but also obviously Overwatch. Widowmaker was, was a big inspiration for this. She has a very pointy face, which you'll see as we go along in this tutorial. Also, it's a tricky type of face to, to sort of nail because you want it to have volume, but you don't want it to be too pointy. And we do run into that problem where we get this high elf looking, terrible oblivion model at, at some point, which we'll correct though. And the first steps are always just, it's always the hardest, it's always where you have, I think, at least for me, you have the most self-doubt because everything everything looks like crap for a good while. You know, you're, you're not sure, you're just blocking in all the basic things that eventually, hopefully, will become the foundation of something nice looking, but it's always hard to know in the beginning. So you're just sort of relying on previous experience, having done this before, and, and most importantly, a lot of reference. Yeah, I always find that whenever I'm, I feel like it looks like crap, I just I just know that I have a plan because I have my reference. If I don't use reference, then I know I'm in trouble. Very early on, this is sort of, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, but for this project, I put in some eyeballs just so I had some reference, some reference points for how big were her eyes actually gonna be because unlike most of the sculpts that I've done in the past, this is going to be more stylized. And usually I tend to stick to realism. So doing something stylized, I feel like I needed a little more of a crutch than just sort of eyeballing, no pun intended, the, the skull and the eye sockets there. Yeah, get the eyes right and everything else will follow. And you'll also see this sculpt going through a few transitions, if you will. Again, like I said, I mostly do realistic stuff. I don't do as much stylized stuff. So it's, it's building upon what I know. And what I know is, you know, 
the standard anatomy and then more realism. So it sort of takes a takes on a, a realistic look and then we de-realistify it and make it more stylized as we go along. Obviously, this is this isn't like oh, this is the preferred method of, of how you should work. That's just sort of how this particular sculpt turned out. And it's always different. Every sculpt, uh, you approach it a little bit differently. You think about different things depending on the kind of references that you have. But one of the key things, especially when sculpting women, especially when sculpting stylized women, is, is the subtlety and the softness of all your shapes. You don't really have a lot of contrast in in this type of face. I mean, if you look at the pure faces from, from Overwatch, the things that stick out aren't wrinkles. It, it's Maybe there's some texture stuff that sticks out and gives contrast, but it's mainly the, the major features, nose, mouth and eyes. And there is a difference between being soft and being blurry as well, because while the while when you sculpt something more feminine, the this, this shapes are more soft. You still have really defined eyes and mouths and noses and ears. They're just as defined as on men, but everything else is is like soft, blending softer together. And the shapes of those specific shapes might be a bit different as well. It is funny though when you're doing this kind of sculpt and you just have a floating head. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it always looks a little weird. Yeah, I mean that's why I, I do like you do here as well. You put in a neck, you put in a little, a little bit of a placeholder body. It's very tricky to get something to be look right if it doesn't have a it doesn't have a body of some sort. And and when you're doing this kind of sculpting, your approach can be whatever. You know, here we just drag out something with the transpose tools, dynamesh it, smooth it a little bit. Okay, now we've got some indication of a neck. It doesn't need to be any more than that. You could insert a cylinder. Uh, that makes it easier to probably angle in the beginning. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just whatever you are most comfortable with. It's always interesting at this point where you've gotten in like the major planes, but it could go either way. It could be a man or a woman right now. It like it doesn't really, it's not that defined yet. So it's a very androgynous sculpt that has the potential to be many things. Not a child because of the proportions. With, with children specifically, you'll often see that very, very big forehead and all the features on the front of the face are a lot more, they're closer together, they're sort of scrunched together. Uh, the, the nose and the eyes in particular sit very low on the face. And that's something that we'll utilize for this kind of stylization as well. We'll try to go towards something kind of kid-like where we pull the proportions down to the lower part of the face to make it more feminine. And uh, notice how incredibly low poly it still is. It's one of the number one things I see beginners do. They, they would have already have this at millions and millions of polygons. Yeah, and even though that, even though you increase the resolution, um, like you subdivide it or whatever, it's still possible to stay low res. And what I mean by that is is having, you know, semi-defined features, but not focusing on details such as pores or wrinkles. Um, that that that's one of the reasons why it can be helpful to stay low res in terms of poly count because you can't. You can't do that. You can't make yourself be distracted by adding those details because your mesh just doesn't support it. This is a way that I sometimes make eyes. I just take the Damien standard brush or clay brush, clay buildup, whatever it is, and I cut into the form, uh, add a little bit of form for the lower eyelids, upper eyelids, and at the, the brow area. And then you just have somewhere for, for the eyes to sit. And sculpt around the sphere. Of, of the eyeball. That's one of the reasons why it's nice to have an eyeball in there because from the very beginning, you sort of get accustomed to the shape of the eyeball. And it's very easy to make the face very flat, especially looking from the profile, if you don't have the eyes in there. Yeah, even if I was doing something even more stylish and there's something like, which is way more anime, I still would have put in an eyeball. It would would have just been like a deformed eyeball. You just want to make sure that you know what kind of eyeball you're going for. And so at this point, now we're sort of entering a more feminine territory, right? We've got 
more um, I would say like think of those like apple like cheeks you know your puffed up cheeks still with a, a semi-defined jawbone not as defined as when you think of a US marine or wherever that's, that's just like completely rectangular but there's some definition to the jaw there um, slightly bigger lips smaller nose as well and then just trying to make a for lack of a better word like a kind face it doesn't have to be with a smile but the lips are are pulled just a tiny tiny bit it's also nice to add a little bit of character at this stage where you just add a little bit of facial expression yeah you can of course change it all later on but it's really nice if you can read what kind of character this this is and you see that depression from the cheekbones down to the jaw it's sort of the, the, the cheekbones poke out then the cheeks go in and then the jaw comes out that's a it's one of those things that especially is often sought after with women when they do makeup you know they try to create that shadow or that highlight on on the cheek in order to accentuate that um, depression so we can get to that result obviously by sculpting to actually accentuate it because there's not going to be any makeup on this it is cool how you can do that as well. If you were to texture this, you could also use traditional makeup techniques to really yeah. accentuate it as well. Another thing you'll see is, I mean, these are just things that I pick up along the way and notice and then try to internalize a little bit in my sculpt. Is like, I try to make the ears a little bit smaller on women most of the time. Again, it's thinking about things to make the face appear softer, acuter, whatever you want to call it. So trying to notice these differences, especially between genders, can be very, very helpful. It's a good exercise. The brow as well. Um, for men especially, especially the more brooding types, you'll often have that Neanderthal brow where just above the nose and, and the eye sockets have like a protruding brow. But for women, um, especially what we're doing here, we kind of make a, a flush shape and what I've noticed, especially with the forehead for women, is that it tends to be a lot more flat. Well, it's like it rounds off towards the front, but with men, it can be a lot more slanted back and have a more aggressive angle. So just thinking about that as an overall approach, um, especially when you're sculpting women like this, where you want to make things soft, you want to make things more round. Think about having that image of round things in your mind while you're sculpting. Yeah, surprising how much that actually helps. It kind of also goes into what do you want it to feel like. If you want it to feel more soft, we'll make the shapes more rounded. If you want to make like this super badass brute, then you want to have more square shapes, more uncomfortable shapes. Another thing that can help uh, with women here, like you saw here, was just making a clear, a more clearly defined lip line. I usually use the Damien standard just to inversely just drag out or, or mark out where the lip line would be that's one of those things that sort of creates contrast within the lips and especially when you have a softer face it it makes it pop more because now you have a more defined uh, ridge that sort of sticks out in a softer face this is an annoying point in the sculpt because you don't have enough resolution to really get in there uh, into the nitty-gritty with the eyes but I always try to challenge myself to keep it as low res as possible because otherwise I will go crazy with detail too soon yeah squeeze as much out of each resolution as you can it's all about clean shapes and depending on the look you're after you know adding this little fat pad above the eye can really change the look of, of the person you're trying to sculpt. Um, for some people, it will be very heavy. They have these hooded eyelets. For other people, if you remove that fat pad completely, you have these um, very bulging eyes. You know, they kind of like, almost like they feel like they fall out of the, out of the skull. Um, so you can use that to your advantage, especially when you're trying to portray certain character traits. Maybe someone who's more crazy and it's more like high energy, you would remove that fat pad and have the, have the eyes stick out more. For a more, I guess, mellow, sexy look, uh, creating those hooded eyelids can really help achieve that uh, much easier, I think.
another thing, especially with this sculpt, when we are referencing Widowmaker, is creating these, especially the shape of the brow, trying to make it a little bit angled. So it has some sharp angles again to contrast the, the softness of, of the rest of the face. I also tend to use a mirror a lot when I'm sculpting like ah, this. Yeah. Even if I were to do a Widowmaker, I would still use a mirror. Just because there is so much, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm not a woman. <laughs> but even, even so, there's still a lot of similarities in, in our faces. Just some universal truths and you can, you can use that a lot. Facial expressions and just a lot of gesture you can use. And it's always helpful if, if the type of person or character that you're sculpting or wanting to create, if you have access to someone like that in real life, to use them as reference. Because one thing is looking at reference online. It's very different looking at a 2D reference compared to when you can walk around a model, uh, take pictures, touch their face. Maybe, not, maybe don't touch their face, it's, unless you get permission, of course. Uh, but it, it can be really helpful to sort of understand the structure and, and the texture the softness, the hardness of things. I mean, honestly, it's a mystery why all of your sculpts looks like your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. There's just no way to know that. <laughs> Here's another one that I feel like you can, especially if you want to make a character look younger like this, is um, fattening up the the chin a little bit and then the, the fleshy part between the underside of the lower lip and, and the chin. It's a very specific thing. But it can give it that more, um, I guess, like like the, 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 the entire face is filled with a little more fat, making it a little more innocent, making it a little more younger. A little more younger? A little younger. <laughs> Grammar. <laughs> and here going in, just trying to define the jawline a little bit. You can see that we are trying to do the stylized approach there, where it's not a clearly defined uh, break like you would have with a normal jawline. Uh, it's more like a one swoop, like a one co cohesive shape that goes from the chin all the way up to the back of the ear. And this is really what I'd call my refinement stage of the shapes. The first 15 minutes or so that we just watched, that was like the blocking out bit, figuring out sort of what is the character, especially what's the gender, what's the age. And then in this part, the next five or 10 minutes or so, trying to figure out uh, which parts can we refine, which car parts can we accentuate, and which parts do we need to sort of push back a little bit. And keep in mind, this is not real time. No, so, no. So, uh, you know, don't, particularly when you're starting out, really don't worry too much about your speed. Focus on the quality of your work, and then speed will come as you, as you go along. Yeah, if anyone's curious, uh, most of these videos here are sped up by around 200%. So it's about twice working speed. But again, it's everything's individual. You know, some people work faster, some people work slower. And it's really not a benchmark that you should aim towards. You're like, okay, this person could sculpt this in for a face in 15 minutes and 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. If you do it in 40, if you do it in five hours, that's the pace that you're currently on. Yeah, your com competitor is your former self. The moment you start to compare yourself when it comes to speed, you, you've lost. It's That's a non-winning battle. One thing I like to do for the eyelids, especially when you get a little more resolution, is the same with the lips. It's going in with like an inverse Damien standard and defying the, the border around the eyelids. And occasionally I like to go through the history that uh, it just shows like the progress of the face. It allows me to pick out certain elements that I might have lost during the sculpt. Because sometimes you do one part and you you sculpt over it, you change it a little bit, but then you realize that it's actually, you liked that part. So having the ability to go back with history and ZBrush and just check that, be like, okay, I like the nose at this stage. Let me try to bring that back. That's the most infuriating thing in the world. We would spend two hours on it and you realize you liked the old version. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it happens a lot, actually. It's so annoying. Another thing you want to look out for 
especially when you're doing younger women, I think, is the part ben beneath the lower eyelid. You can see there's a little bit of a plane change from the lower eyelid to the cheeks there. Um, that one has to be subtle. You don't want to do too much because then you end up aging your, your character quite a lot, actually. Again, this is the type of shape I'm talking about with the with the jaw, where it's like it's a swooping line, all sort of one line, one cohesive line. And eyeballs early as well, like actually add uh, like the pupil to them. It adds a lot of character. Yeah, it, it actually changes the way you look at the character completely. <laughs> like it's like I connect a lot more with the character now. It's not just bunch of shapes this is this is the first moment for me where it becomes a person again damien standard is a fantastic brush for these very close quarters where you have two pieces of mesh i guess that are pretty close together so it's really helpful to define those borders with that and getting the eye size right, especially for this kind of stylized sculpt, is uh, it's always a tricky one. You have to experiment with that. And there is a lot of back and forth also in this, this tutorial, sort of figuring out exactly what's the type of, of eye that we're after. And even the eyeball, the eyeball changes a lot. Um, you know, the eyeball will also be part of the mesh at some point. So we like tweak it and move it around, it just makes things a little bit easier. So we'll sort of replace those as we go along. And because this is a more stylized mesh, I decided to create lashes and eyebrows just out of pure geometry. Um, sometimes, you know, you do it with actual uh, hair systems, but for this, this is sort of keeping it in the spirit of Overwatch, um, especially when you look at, I think all the women in Overwatch basically use these kinds of lashes and the kinds of brows that we'll be making. And I thought they looked pretty cool. so. We're doing something similar there, just again, keeping it low res with Dynamesh, getting the basic shapes down. It doesn't matter if you're doing lashes or you're doing a face, the approach is the exact same. Going in with Trim Dynamic. Trim Dynamic is great for creating these uh, very sharp planes where you can do it across like a, a bigger plane at a time. Just sort of flattens everything down. It's a little easier to control this with uh, compared to something like your, your clay or clay buildup, I, I think. It's one of those shapes that you can just, you can keep tweaking because especially in the beginning stage where everything, everything is low res and nothing is the final shape. It's just, it's important to also move on and, and start creating other things. You don't get bogged down with tiny, insignificant details in this part um, because the brows and, and the eyelashes will be redone with C Modeler in, in part two. And that just gives us a lot more control, especially when you're making clean, stylized shapes. A lot of stylized shapes like this actually tend to resemble hard surface quite a lot more than they resemble organic parts. So poly modeling those are often, it's often an easier way to get a better result. Yeah, sometimes you also want that to be, you want to have a really clean topology for the characters as well, starting maybe off with a base mesh instead of a, of a sphere, just because then you already have some, some cleaner shapes you can work from. And you can see now, especially adding the color to the lashes, which we'll be doing to the brows as well, that changes the character, the appearance of the character quite a lot. The same as, as putting in the actual pupils in the eyeballs, you get to connect with the character a little more. Making these darker or darker shade compared to the skin tones, um, the gray, very natural skin tones in ZBrush, <laughs> uh, just makes them, it helps them stand out and it helps frame the face a lot, a lot better, I think. Yeah, it's always weird when you can't figure out why a character isn't working and you're missing <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah, when you compare the left to the right side now, you know, it looks like you just shaved off your eyebrows. Because that, that's what you look like when you shave off your eyebrows. You just have this smooth ridge of, of fat and muscle and bone. Yeah, 
yeah, it's important to spend a lot of effort on each individual element like this as well. Every every single model is just comprised of smaller pieces. Get those pieces right and everything else follows. Yeah, I guess that's like, it's kind of like the secret when it comes to sculpting or creating characters, right? It's just slow, meticulous work. You make one thing at a time, focus a little bit here, focus a little bit there, and then after some time you have a, you have hopefully a, a complete character. It's weird once you turn on and off the, the color <laughs> for the, for the eyelashes, it changes mm. a lot. Um, I just set up a hotkey for that. Actually, I think it's Alt Alt and C to just switch um, my um, my colorize on and off. It just helps sometimes. Sometimes I want to see it with the textures on. Sometimes I don't. So, and here was a, it was looking a little too harsh with the pure black. So. I lightened up the black a little bit and, and threw in a little bit of purple just to not make it like completely dark. You know, she's not like a goth character, so you don't want it darker than darker than night. It still has it can still have some shape and some contour to to it. Yeah, she's the cool kind of goth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one that yeah has a hired gun and kills people. <laughs> yes. It's actually interesting when you look at the characters in Overwatch and how many design elements they actually share. They're actually very, well, I wouldn't call them generic, but, you know, they all sort of respect the same language. And I think that's why you can tell that they're all from the same universe. Same kind of lashes, the same kind of brows, the same kind of shapes for the faces. So if you were to just shave the hair off and take everything else off of the women and just focus on their faces, um, they, they do share, share a lot of different elements obviously some characters are, are completely different um it's not that there are there is variation in there but the overall shape language is still the same and here's just one of those things that i don't know i never really want to do which is ears it's one of those things that's always left until the end we're like oh, okay i'll just do some ears just get a vdm brush <laughs> yeah ears are annoying because it's one of these that ears are pretty similar between people so, and yes, you can have character and ears, of course, but a lot of times they just, they just have to be there. It's more like a checklist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are the ears there? Yes. And then you can refine them. And like with any, everything else in this sculpt, it's just for me trying to simplify those as well. Just break down the, the shape of a normal human ear and take away some of the some of the contrast, some of the shape in the ear, and just simplify the shape. Right now she just looks very tired. <laughs> yeah, it's important to you know what kind of emotional quality you want from the <laughs> yeah. beginning. Because if you want going for tired, that's awesome. You just have to be consistent about that. Yeah, hooded lids plus a really, really like thick lashes like mm. that. Um, equals tired and it's obviously not what we want for this we want like an in-between where you look semi-tired because that that's like that sexy look but not too tired because i mean obviously then you look sexy well i mean tired she shouldn't look sleep deprived no ex exactly <laughs> just give her massive bags under her eyes <laughs> yeah that should be the new title of this making a sleep deprived overwatch styled <laughs> face This particular region I always find tricky to get right. The way that something fades off from the front part of your face to the side, like that frontal lobe to the side, it's always tricky. Um, the nice thing about having the brows here is that it gives me a clear indication of how things are actually wrapping around the face. And here you see what I'm talking about with, you have that fat pad underneath the brows to sort of help lift it up a little bit and then angling those eyebrows a little bit to make them i don't know like a little more aggressive to contrast how soft everything else in the face is and boom it's gone <laughs> it's crazy how different it looks when you take out take away the eyebrows and yeah This is actually a nice little tip i think is like when you're moving stuff just mask out the thing you don't want to move and then move the rest. It seems like it seems obvious when you say it, but the nice thing is that it can help you create really, really defined shapes 
Um, this is something I often use, especially when I do it, when I work on the eyes and the, the brow area. Yeah, it's weird once you sort of start to get used to what it looks like with color, like sort of basically makeup, then you take that away and make it the same kind of gray, it completely loses its, its, its effect. It looks very different, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we just have a little bit of adjustment on, on the skull left, trying to get it more in line with the concepts that we're looking at. And that's pretty much it for this first chapter, you know, so blocking everything out, doing some light refinement, finding the character and adding some small secondary details, in our case, lashes and, and eyebrows, and just trying to define the style that we're after. And, and also, you know, age, gender as well. So make sure to stay tuned for part two. It's coming in, uh, in next week. We will be finishing the sculpt there, doing retopology as well, which is gonna be interesting because it's all in ZBrush, as well as doing uh, stylized hair at the end. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you're looking to level up your skill set or if you're looking for specific 3D assets, make sure to head over to the Flip Normals Marketplace where I'm pretty sure we've got everything you could ever want in uh, the world of CT.